Hi there! How Stuff Works is at DragonCon 2014, and I have the honor of speaking with Mr. Jay Freeman, aka Sorek, who is an expert on the subject of jailbreaking, something I'm very curious about. I know a lot of you are too, so I'm going to bite the bullet here. Mr. Freeman, can you explain exactly what is jailbreaking? Certainly. So jailbreaking is the process of allowing the user to take control of their device, whether it be an iPhone or an iPad. Um, the term is also used with some other devices, um, like game consoles, like PlayStations. Typically, the user then gets the ability to change how it looks, to change how it functions, uh, to install software that doesn't come from the original equipment manufacturer. So this is sort of the idea of, I've gone out and I've purchased this thing, I should be allowed to, to play with it. I shouldn't be locked down into just one experience. Yes, uh, it's tied very closely to uh, right to tinker. Gotcha. So let's say that, uh, that I have gone out and I've purchased a new device. Why, why would I consider jailbreaking it? I mean, what, what makes you want to jailbreak a device? So there are a number of different reasons why people jailbreak. Um, some people just want to personalize their device. They, they want their iPhone to look different from their friends. Uh, it, it can be a little frustrating sometimes you have this expensive device and it looks just like everyone else's. Um, some people have functionality requirements. Uh, so in my case, I'm really excited about something called Ringer XVIP that allows me to control the incoming phone calls that I get um, so that if it's an anonymous phone number, my phone doesn't even ring. Uh, if it's a uh, number that I don't know, it doesn't ring. Um, but if it's a number that's from somebody who I work with who actually should, for example, be able to wake me up because my server might be offline, then it will ring even if my phone is on silent. I also understand that jailbreaking means that you might be able to get access to apps that otherwise you might not be able to, to download to your device, right? There's a lot of talk about the restrictions that Apple has on the App Store. So things like uh, Firefox for a long time weren't allowed to be in the App Store. But at some point later, these applications became allowed. So what we've seen is a pattern that over time, Apple allows more things in their App Store as they become more comfortable with certain types of activity or certain kinds of engineering. People look then at the things that get rejected from the App Store and typically think, oh, well, you could jailbreak, and that's, that's the process by which they get them. See, this is really exciting to me. I, am, uh, I like to follow the hacker community who work on different devices to have them do things that were either not intended necessarily by the manufacturer or just not anticipated. Sometimes companies start to embrace this, this spirit and sometimes they seem to resist it. Why, why would a company, do you think, really resist this, uh, this approach? So there are, there are a few reasons why companies resist uh, things like jailbreaking. Um, the most obvious one can be control. Um, so a lot of people talk about uh, Apple and the very controlled experience that they provide all of their users and the idea that if I sit down in an iPhone, I'll know how it works. Whereas if you try to use my iPhone, you might not know how it works because everything's different. Almost a more interesting uh, reason, though, is, is that sometimes uh, there, are, there are laws that require the manufacturers to know what kind of software is being utilized. Um, the, uh, an example of that is the wireless space. Uh, so the companies like Verizon are supposed to know what they're using that radio frequency spectrum for. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to make certain kinds of modifications, which actually jailbreaking hardly ever lets you do, um, but if you were able to make those kinds of modifications, they could suddenly be in a situation where they're not really certain what their radio spectrum is being used for. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, jailbreaking typically doesn't allow those things, but that is a, it's like a side effect of that. They, they try to make the device much more locked down. That's why you'll see some carriers really care about this. And so you'll have a Samsung Galaxy S4 from Verizon or AT&T, and the Verizon one will be more locked down the AT&T one. You'll be a little confused by that. That's why. Mm. So exactly why do you do this? So when I was a kid, I learned to program in the second grade, but that's not it's like I learned a program from my school. We had like we had Apple two C's and we had um, a uh, Apple um, Apple logo. I think it was the. That's not how I got excited about programming, though. That's not what really made me a programmer. What made me a programmer was many years later when I got a TI calculator. Mm -hmm. And that TI calculator that I got was programmable. And the thing that was really awesome about it was not that it was just programmable by me. It was that I could program it and I could send that program to you. There was a little cable you could connect between all the devices. So it kind of gets children in a position where they're able to distribute and construct and manipulate software. That's something that only happens if you have this functional device that the children have to have anyway that you're able to program. Today, I think that the ubiquitous computing platform that children have is the iPod Touch. 
So the iPod Touch comes free with a lot of laptops. Uh, it's something that uh, parents might have upgraded to a new one and then, then ended up giving their children as a hand-me-down. Uh, one of the cool things about it is it's not a phone. A lot of parents would like to not give their child a cell phone. Um, and it's also a gaming platform that's not very expensive because it's like one to two hundred dollars um, and in some cases free. So it's something that a lot of children have. And I think that it's really important to be able to put these children in a position where they're able to experience manipulating software and distributing software and allowing us to have a generation of developers going forward that is similar to the generation of developers that we have now. Oh, that's really cool. Thank you, Sarek, very much for this conversation. It was very enlightening. Uh, I hope you guys out there learned a lot. If you have any other questions about jailbreaking or anything else that's technology related or maybe just want to know how stuff works, leave us a comment below. It'll be really helpful. We read all of them and we really love to see them. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to our channel so that you can see all the new stuff we have coming up and we'll see you again soon.